All right, I think we're live there. Hello, hello everybody and thanks for joining our inaugural webinar to celebrate International Guide Dog Day. I hope you're all taking a break from your very busy or perhaps not really that busy schedules at the moment to have a bit of lunch and join us in saying hello to some beautiful guide dogs on their very special day and maybe learn a little bit more about the work we're doing here at Guide Dogs. First of all, I'm going to introduce you to Zena here. Zena's a guide dog in training and in my role as a guide dog mobility instructor, I teach her what it takes to get to the next level. Now, I really love my job. Um, apart from the obvious, I do get to spend a lot of time with dogs training them, but I really love the next bit when I match these dogs up with a handler, somebody who is blind or has low vision and teach them how to use the dog and, and travel around with it. It's sort of like teaching somebody to drive a car, but a little bit more complex. So it takes a lot of time and effort, but it's all worth it in the end when we see the results. Now, um, as you may have heard, we've recently welcomed a brand new puppy into the world and we've named her after this very platform. We called her Zoom because we've been spending tons of time on Zoom. It's really helped us keep connected with each other, with our clients, volunteers and supporters. And you are gonna meet little Zoom uh, in just a little while. He's only three weeks old, he's very cute. But first, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce you to our seven panelists joining us today. We'll start down in Victoria where we've got Karen Hayes. She's the CEO at Guide Dogs Victoria and also Alex Hecker. She's the Guide Dogs Victoria ambassador. Now in New South Wales, we've got the lovely Leah and she has our lovely newborn puppy Zoom. And we've also got Dale Cleaver. He's the CEO oh, at Guide Dogs New South Wales ACT. And, uh, and myself, I'm, uh, I'm here in Sydney as well. In South Australia, we've got Chelsea Bartlett, our guide dog handler with her beautiful guide dog, Skylar. And then we're gonna be heading up to Queensland where we've got Paul Harper. He's a guide dog handler and associate professor in law at the University of Queensland. So plenty to get through. We're gonna hear from all the panelists and their puppies over the next half an hour. But first, I think we should start with the star of the show, Leah, before he explodes with cuteness, can you show us your little friend there, Zoom? Yeah, hi, Ryan. So this is Zoom and he's three weeks old and he is a male yellow Labrador. So he was born here in New South Wales in our home rearing program. So he's being looked after now by one of our families. So it's very cute. Um, can, you so, oh, can you tell us a little bit more about that home rearing program and what that involves? Sure. So um, I might tell you a little bit more about Zoom. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go for it. <laughs> we so, all um, want to hear about him. Yeah. So Zoom's... He's just opened his eyes, so you can see he's opened his eyes and he's starting to walk around his pen a little bit more now as well. And he's just started to get teeth. So um, he's starting to interact a lot more with everybody and his environment. Um, his little personality's coming out a bit too now. So he um, loves, loves cuddles, so he loves getting cuddles from his puppy raising family. Yeah, so, but his mum, Quill, is a black Labrador and so Quill, um, had her, had just only Zoom as the only puppy. So yeah, we generally have more, we have between four and five puppies, or four, I mean five and nine puppies in our litters. So yeah, Zoom's pretty special being the only puppy. Yeah. Um, well, well so, that is cute. And this home rearing program, um, what, why does this exist? What, what, what is it yeah. all about? So the home rearing program is where our breeding dogs live with people in their homes. And so they whelp the puppies from their homes. So they, they have them for when they're born till they're six weeks old. So they give them, they supply them with like really um, loving, stable homes. So with plenty of enrichment, so the puppies then are really well adjusted puppies. Yeah, so little, little Zoom will be there for six weeks. And it's right. a really rewarding experience for the families as well, watching them grow from a newborn puppy to, you know, a nice six week old puppy. So. <laughs> once, once, the puppies, once the puppies are six weeks old, then they head back onto the guide dog centre and they, they go off then ready for their puppy raising journey with their puppy raising family. He's so cute and smudgy. Um, do, 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 are they like newborn babies? They need to like eat all the time? They do, yeah. So, so Zoom will just be sn snacking a lot. As you can see, he's really large for his age. He's about three <laughs> kilos. <laughs> and that's because he gets all of the good milk to himself. Oh, lucky puppy. Thanks so much, Leah. Thanks for introducing us to Zoom. He's the cutest thing I've seen today, that's for sure. Um, we'll, we'll hang you on the line there, Leah, for a bit, but we're going to welcome any viewers who have just joined us. If you're wondering what's going on, we're here to celebrate International Guide Dog Day by saying hello to some of our charming guide dogs along the way in their journey. We've seen a puppy. I've got a guide dog in training here with me. Uh, and right now, we might jump down to Victoria and say hello to the CEO of Guide Dogs Victoria. That's Karen Hayes. Karen, uh, 
Uh, I see you've got a dog there as well. Who's your little isolation buddy? Hi, Ryan. Well, I'd like to introduce you to my beautiful ambassador dog, Willow. Willow is a blonde Labrador. She's nine years old. She's a very, very pretty girl. Um, Willow was going through the guide dog program and uh, when they were assessing her, they found that she has very sensitive paws. So she won't work, walk on a gravel path. So she's a bit of a princess, but uh, so she was reclassified and now she's an ambassador for guide dogs. She goes absolutely everywhere with me. Uh, some people get a company car, Ryan. I got a company <laughs> dog and I definitely got the better end of the equation. There's no question about that. Yeah. She did every, all events with me. She's met a lot of VIPs as well, including Prince Harry and Megan. So she's a very, very special girl. Wow. Um, I, I just got lumped with the company car, unfortunately. So you, you have done well there. Um, now, you mentioned that she didn't end up being a guide dog. What are some of the other roles that our dogs take on if that's not really their suited profession? Yeah, look, Guide Dogs Australia is recognised as having one of the best breeding programs in the world. And so all of our dogs play very valuable roles. So those that don't make it as guide dogs, we look at other career paths for them. So like Willow, she had a career path change from guide dogs to marketing, but there'll be others that will have a career path change to a pets as therapy dog or an assistance dog. We also have a program with um, uh, the Frankston Hospital here in Victoria, where we have Kenzo, the director of happiness, who basically provides comfort and support to the frontline medical staff. So he has a very, very, very important role, particularly right now. But there's also a wonderful program in New that we have in New Zealand, in New South Wales, which is the New South Wales Canine, Canine Court program that supports uh, that accompanies victims who are going into court cases and maybe you know feeling a level of anxiety. And our dogs really help them just manage some of those anxious moments in that sort of difficult situation. Uh, thanks very much, Karen. Um, uh, we're going to stay down in Victoria and we're going to have a chat to Alex Hecker. She's a guide dog's ambassador. Um, Alex, um, you've got Linny there, don't you? She's gorgeous. I do. Thanks, Ryan. So this is Linny. She's um, two and a half years old. So she's part of the L litter for Guide Dogs Victoria. She was born on the 25th of October in 2017. And she's, uh, I've just got some treats here. So she's um, looking with those longing eyes right now. So um, Linny's litter were all yellow. So she's a, she's a yellow um, three quarters Labrador and one quarter golden retriever actually. So she's a little bit more golden than the lovely Willow there. Um, so my journey with Linny started, hello, come here. <laughs> my journey with Linny started um, when she was eight weeks old. So uh, we went on our puppy raising journey together and um, everyone's journey is different, but Linny was so naughty as a puppy for the first few weeks. She was uh, very loud. She had little ten temper tantrums. She used to bark at me when I was asking her to do things. Hey, come up here. Everyone wants to see you. There we go. Food motivated, obviously. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, the first few weeks were quite tricky in puppy raising, but then uh, you forget about those weeks and the rest of the journey is so incredible. So um, Linny was with me for the whole year yeah, and uh, then we had to say our goodbyes to her when she was 14 months old. So she uh, went in for her guide dog assessment and uh, she passed. And then the guide dogs team down in Victoria decided that they wanted her in uh, their world renowned breeding program. So she's now a broody and um, she's going to have her first litter this year. So we're very excited for that. Yeah, Alex, um, you touched on that there. I mean, puppy raising, uh, a lot of people, when they think about that, it must be so hard to give the dog back. But sure, there was lots of, this is hilarious, working with dogs. Um, it's amazing if this doesn't all turn into a disaster. <laughs> um, um, so it must be really tough giving the dog back. But what about some of the great times you had um, as being a puppy raiser? Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, never work with children or animals, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it's such an incredible journey. It's one that will, will stay with me for life. Um, it was a decision that I made being a, a mad dog lover my entire life. It was just a, a natural thing for me to take on. Um, but as I mentioned, it, it was definitely challenging and you do have to take into account that it is um, a 12 month commitment, but um, it's one that's definitely worthwhile. So being able to take your dog absolutely everywhere is just such a highlight of the entire journey. So Linny here has been to photo shoots, she's been to ladies luncheons, she's been to the horse races. 
Um, she's been everywhere, you know, the movies, she's even been to the circus. Um, she knows she's on camera. Hey, <laughs> come here. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's so much fun being able to take your puppy everywhere for 12 months. Great. Thanks so much, Alex. It's really nice to meet Linny as well. We might have a look at the next stage of the journey now. Uh, a guide dog who is actually out there working as a guide dog. And for that, we're going to head to South Australia. We've got uh, Chelsea down there. Chelsea, can you hear us? And how long have you had your guide dog, Skylar, for? I can hear you. Um, I've had Skylar for about nine months now. Great. And what does she mean to you? Can you tell us a little about your relationship with Skylar? Sure. So Skylar's, I'll just give you a little bit about Skylar. So she's a black Labrador. Um, she's about two years old and um, her relationship means a lot to me, particularly during these times. She's, she's quite a, a sweet and gentle dog. Um, she's just very loyal and loving and, and wants to be around people all the time and just, and just um, creating that bond with each other and, and being out and about with her uh, means a lot and getting that freedom and independence as well. Yeah, I guess um, you just touched on there, particularly at this time, the dog's not only providing that independence, but she must, uh, your dog must be providing a lot of companionship and support as well during this time. Absolutely. She's a beautiful dog and provides a lot of support and, and loving, um, a loving care. We look, we look, we look after both, both, we look after each other and she's always coming up to me with a toy to have a bit of a play and, and she's been a wonderful um, distraction from all the things that are happening at the moment with, with coronavirus. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us, Chelsea. It's lovely to meet uh, Skylar there. We're going to go to another guide dog handler now up in Queensland. Uh, well, we've got um, we got Paul up there. How are you going there, Paul? And who have you got with you? Sean. How long, yeah, how long have you had Sean for, mate? Looks like you've got a strong bond there. Yeah, I got him in uh, 2015. Um, after that, he's my third guide dog. I had uh, Chester before that and Weston before him. The big right. And what's the most important thing that Sean has brought to your life? One thing, now you're, now you're narrowing it down. <laughs> it really gives me dignity, enables me to traverse uh, locations with confidence, gives me companionship. Um, I went overseas with work just recently on a Fulbright scholarship and I wasn't able to take, the, take Sean. And so I had a, a period without him and it made, really gave, gave me that opportunity to reflect and just the importance of a guide dog in getting around without having to concentrate, the freedom, the companionship and um, the way they really make, they make you a whole person. Yeah. Now you're an associate professor in law as well there, Paul. Does that mean your dog has been absorbing a lot of this uh, information uh, sitting in uh, these lectures and things with you? Is that, is he smarter than the usual guide dog you reckon? I think he's, he's incredibly intelligent. He opts to sleep through all my lectures. <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good. Probably a wise move. Thanks very much for joining us up there, Paul. Um, we had a couple of questions come in through the week. We might just start. Uh, we just got a couple. I might get those out there, ones that I thought were appropriate. Um, this one might be for you back there, Alex. People are interested in what it actually, how do you become a puppy raiser? Because it sounds like a pretty, pretty good gig. I think you're on mute there, Alex. There you no, go. It's all good. I've got this. Um, yeah, so it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's such an amazing experience to be a part of. Being able to change somebody's life who is vision impaired is, um, it's a really, she keeps sitting down every time I, I talk. Um, it's, it's a really special thing to be a part of, to be able to say that you and your puppy have played a part in that. So if anyone does want to get involved, I would suggest um, jumping onto the Guide Dogs Australia website because uh, you'll be able to find some more information there um, you'll be able to apply online as a to become a volunteer firstly for guide dogs australia uh, and then from there you'll just go through the puppy raising application process the intakes are a little bit different um, state by state at the moment in the current situation so um, just to sort of be aware of that and then from there uh, you have a couple of last hoops to jump through in terms of puppy raising um, home visits uh, just that sort of thing, just to make sure that you are suitable and that your lifestyle is suitable. And then they will much match the puppy to your lifestyle. So for example, with me, I'm a model and presenter, so I was always on the move. So uh, the guide dogs team matched Linny with me, who she's, uh, she's very quiet and calm and quite confident as well. So they do match the puppy to the individual household, which is uh, pretty cool. They can do that from just a few weeks of age. Um, as well as that, uh, 
looking after the puppy, keeping it safe is the, the most important role as a puppy raiser, making sure um, that the puppy does become a part of your family. You will be responsible for basic skills, teaching the puppy, you know, basic sit down, stay, those sorts of commands. Uh, you'll also be in charge of socialization. So being able to take your puppy everywhere is the bonus and just exposing pup to all different environments um, from, you know, public transport to men wearing hats, uh, you know, just all sorts of loud noises in different environments, which is very important. Uh, and that's 12 months of fun in that journey. Um, at the end, it is sad if I had a dollar for every time someone said I can't give the puppy back, uh, I'd be a millionaire. Uh, it, is, it is a hard time, but it's a very small window of time because um, you are prepared for it for the whole year. That's what you sign up to do. And um, after that, you get to see your dog change someone's life. And that's, the, that's looking at the bigger picture, making sure um, that this dog succeeds in what it does and you play a huge part in that. So it's a really special thing to be a part of. All right, thanks very much, Alex. And if anyone out there is interested, head to the Guide Dogs uh, page in your state to find out more info. One last question. I think this one is really appropriate. Uh, we just met little puppy Zoom earlier on in the meeting. Uh, who names the puppies? Who names the puppies? Uh, I think Karen uh, down in Victoria, you might be right to take on this question. Yes, thanks, Ryan. Well, we have um, a lady at, in Guide Dog Victoria. Her name is Di. She's worked with us for over 40 years. And in fact, her, her late husband was the very first orientation and mobility instructor in Australia. So she has a long, long history with us, but her role is to name all of the puppies, but also to keep track of all, where all the puppies, puppies are, because you can't have a, a dog in the colony that's got the same name while, so for Willow, she will be the only Willow within our, within our colony uh, until she passes, which hopefully is a long time from now. So Di keeps a close eye on that. The other opportunity is with our, our, our puppy sponsors. So a lot of people choose to sponsor our dogs. And um, when they choose to sponsor the dog, they can actually name the puppy themselves. And uh, a lot of people name them after a parent or, a, or a, just their favorite puppy name or whatever the case may be. But when they do sponsor one of our puppies, they then take, get the opportunity to follow the whole journey of that puppy becoming a guide dog. So we connect with that, 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 that sponsor and um, from you know, the very early stages as a puppy, and then they go through all of the different milestones that the puppy goes through to ultimately becoming a guide dog, and then attending a fantastic graduation ceremony to celebrate the role that this guide dog will play, ultimately being um, the support for somebody who's blind or has low vision and support them to live independently and safely and live basically, as you've heard from Paul and Chelsea, to live the life that they choose. Thanks, Karen. Now, is, is there a guide dog down there in Victoria getting around by the name of Karen by any chance? Actually, you know what? There's not at the moment, Ryan. I think we actually need to do something about I that. Think, I think you need to get on that. Um, we're just about ready to, uh, to wrap up uh, this meeting. We're going to throw it over to the CEO of Guide Dogs New South Wales ACT, Dale Cleaver, to finish off. But before I throw it to him, I might embarrass him here a little bit. He sent this fantastic email out to all staff yesterday, and I want to read you the little quote that he wrote to finish off with. It's quite fitting for these times. He said... Finally, in these difficult times, I think there are some great lessons we can learn from our beautiful guide dogs. Be present, focus on the immediate task at hand and don't be distracted. For a dog, every morning is the start of a wonderful day. Every walk is the best walk and every meal is the best meal and every interactions with the ones they love is the best interaction. Rejoice in life's simplest moments. Dale, well said, mate. I'm going to hand it over to you to update on our response of the COVID-19 epidemic, our pandemic, and, uh, and also wrap things up. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan, and uh, thank you for being such a great host today. Um, we couldn't have asked for a better one. Um, I would have asked, hopefully you've seen my dog, which is a, a terrier. Now, um, she's not quite guide dog, guide dog um, potential, so uh, if you hear any noise in the background here, it's her protecting me. But hopefully what you've found today is a real opportunity to get to know about the work of the Guide Dogs Network across Australia. Um, I think hopefully what you've seen is some great um, experiences ranging from what it means to be for our young born puppies and a particular mention to Zoom, our, our young puppy there who we've had a real pleasure in celebrating three weeks old 
wonderful addition uh, to us and uh, quite appropriately named, we thought, uh, given the COVID experience. So we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings with our clients and with our people. And so uh, it was a great opportunity for us to recognise that in naming that little cute puppy Zoom. Um, hopefully what you've also seen is what it means for our clients, the life-changing experience that a dog has in all of our lives, but it's very special indeed when it actually comes to our clients. That dog helps change lives, transforms them, and enables, us, enables them to have some of the independence that side of people often take for granted. So we're hopefully we've given you an insight to that. A little bit of puppy raising, which without the puppy raisers who support our work, we wouldn't be able to provide the guide dogs that we actually do. Those first 12 months in the guide dog puppy's life make such a difference, an important part in the training of a successful guide dog. So hopefully you've seen some of the overview of that along with some of the simple things that we do, how we go about it, how we name a puppy. So it's a, it is a difficult time for everyone right now around the country and indeed around the world. Um, International Guide Dog Day was created um, to really uh, signify the important role that our guide dogs play in helping people with low vision and blindness and that enables them to lead safe and independent lives. So this year we thought we wanted to celebrate, if we couldn't do that in our various events around the country, it was a great way for us to do this in a very alternative way. So this is our first Zoom meeting of this kind. Having said that during COVID, um, we're supporting our clients uh, and our puppy raisers through technology such as Zoom. So I'd just like to also acknowledge Zoom who's actually helped fund and provide us um, and be able to do this for us today. Um, so it's a really wonderful opportunity, we think, to, to go about celebrating International Guide Dog Day in a very different way. So the recent weeks have also been a chance um, in our organisation to dig back into that community spirit. We've been around for over 60 years, so we want to particularly thank everyone that supported us during this challenging time, including our donors, our volunteers, our supporters and the general community who continue to really keep up a very positive support for us during this time. We hope that you've enjoyed today's session. It's the first of the kind for us. Um, we've loved being part of it. And we've received a number of questions and we will respond to those. Please look out for our Guide Dogs Australia website and our social media channels, including the Guide Dogs Australia Facebook page, where we hope to give you more information. But we've enjoyed it. We hope you have too. And it's a great chance to showcase not only our dogs, but our work in practice. So thank you. And Dale, before we go, we're just going to give the final word. For those who missed it at the start, we're going to go back to Puppy Zoom. Uh, can we just say hello to Puppy Zoom there, Leah, uh, just to say goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for joining thanks. us, guys. See you later. Have a good day.